Welcome to The Real Boardloft. I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Christensen Surfer Rosa uh, with an incredible air spray, courtesy of Peter St. Pierre at Moonlight Glassing. And uh, I also have my Christensen Nautilus here as well. And uh, there's a reason that I have that board here. Um, I'm a big fan of the Nautilus. I've been riding it for a few years. Uh, this is a new one that uh, Chris made for me uh, for our trip to Nicaragua. Uh, and then at the same time, he also made me a Surfer Rosa. And when I was packing for the trip, I had these two boards new stacked on top of each other. I had the, the Nautilus and then I had the Surfer Rosa stacked on top of it. And all of a sudden I just turned around and I did like a double take on the boards. I was like, man, those boards are literally exactly the same except for the tails. And uh, my Nautilus, I'm riding that at 610, uh, the Surfer Rosa at 66. And when you literally, like when I was looking at the board stacked, it was like the back four inches was just cut off the Nautilus. And then when you, if you did something like that, you'd have a really blocky uh, foil on the end of the tail. And then just refoil the tail nice and thin out the back. Uh, and you've got a Surfer Rosa. And that's actually exactly how the board surfed. The board surfed um, very similarly to a, uh, to a Nautilus, um, really good paddler, really easy entry into the wave. It, it was funny, actually, the, the Surfer Rosa caught waves even easier than the Nautilus, which I thought was impossible. But I think a lot of that is just the tail shape, having that wider squash tail in the Surfer Rosa, you know, basically just gave it a nice push into the wave. And you would literally catch the wave easier, but also catch the wave with more initial speed on the Surfer Rosa just by having this wider tail um, and just having the wave, like just have more surface to push you into the wave. Um, so that's something, you know, to learn on this board, but also across all boards, like a wider tail, you're gonna get pushed into the wave a little bit easier. The best way to describe this board is, uh, is it, it has a, a, short, a more of a shortboard feel without losing the drive and the glide of the Nautilus. And that's what like, uh, it's what's so addicting in that board is like how much down the line speed you can get and how well the rail holds and, and just the wraps that you can do on that board at high speed. And once you feel that and get used to it and you go back to a normal shortboard, it, it just kind of feels like it's kind of just bouncing around and a little bit squirrely and not really much like direction or drive in the board. And so the Surfer Rosa takes that glide and that momentum and that easy surfing feeling and puts it into a, a more compact package uh, that has a, that can do, can do all the turns that the Nautilus can do when you want to start drawing things out, but also has a, a snappier feel um, as well. So again, I, we mentioned earlier, like the Nautilus is uh, 610 and this Surfer Rosa is 66. Uh, I, I rode the board both thruster uh, and quad and liked it uh, both ways. I did eventually end up settling in on riding it quad full time uh, and, and really liked it. I was riding the, uh, for thruster, I was riding the John John fins uh, in a large template. And then when I went to quad, I would leave those John Johns in the front. And then I went with the QD2 four inch trailers uh, in the back and that worked really well. Um, just a really cool board, really good all around board. Just clean, clean outline on this thing. Um, obviously travel wax, some dings on it as well for the bumps and bruises that we got, but just a super, super fun board. And it's just got the Christensen feel to it as well. You know, this, um, if you've ever ridden any of Chris's boards, you know, from a, from a sea bucket all the way down to his fish, um, you know that they have a very unique feel, great glide through the water, uh, spends a lot of time on, I would, you know, I would say just as much time on shaping the rails as he does on the entire board. Like you look at how well the rails are shaped and just like the unique rail shape that these boards have. Uh, and obviously that's on this uh, Surfer Rosa as well. When you look on the deck, you can see the Volon 
deck patch, like that darker color uh, laid into the board, that's gonna give more durability underneath your feet. Uh, it also has a wet, what's called a wedge stringer. And this is a, a cedar stringer that's wider in the front and then tapers out in the back. And that gives you more stiffness and strength uh, where you might uh, run into a buckling or a breaking issue in bigger waves and then allows the board to really flex quite a bit more in the tail with that narrower stringer out the back. A little bit of a beak going out the front of the nose of the board as well. And then, uh, yeah, just a great all around board. And uh, it just has that really smooth Christensen feel, uh, you know, similar to the, to the Nautilus, but uh, a little bit like tighter pivot um, off the top. It's the Christensen Surfer Rosa. If you have any questions about this board or you'd like to place an order for one, you can give us a call at the shop. 252-987-6000, or you can look us up online, realwatersports.com. Thanks for tuning in.